Hey, welcome back to another video. Hope you're all having an awesome day or night. Today, we're gonna to be going over some news from the Acolyte Show, which I've been extremely excited for as well. Now, let's, Leslie Headland is the one that's uh, helming this whole show, and uh, she has some words to say about it, so let's read the article and then we can uh, talk about it, because I have a few things to say. Headland took to Vanity Fair to discuss the new information about the Acolyte, a story about the early struggles between Sith and Jedi, stating that she wants to explore what events took place that allowed a Sith Lord like Palpatine to infiltrate the Senate. Headland describes the pre-Phantom Menace setting as a prosperous and seemingly peaceful era where the galaxy is still sleek and glistening, giving it terms like Renaissance and the Age of Enlightenment. She also describes the Jedi as wearing gold and white uniforms that rarely get dirty, as during the era of the series, the Jedi rarely engage in battles. Headland's new information about the Acolyte follows the event's unveiling of news regarding official the other Star Wars projects. Obi-Wan Kenobi has received more advertising ahead of the premiere on 27th. Blah, 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 blah. She goes on to say that it takes place roughly 100 years before The Phantom Menace. She also noted that the series will explain how the Star Wars galaxy got to a certain point seen in that film where the Sith could infiltrate the Republic. So here's the quote. A lot of those characters haven't even been born yet. Yoda's still around. A lot of those characters haven't even been born yet. We're taking a look at the political and personal and spiritual things that came up in a time period that we don't know much about. My question when watching The Phantom Menace was always like, well, how did things get to this point? How did we get to a point where a Sith Lord can infiltrate the Senate and none of the Jedi pick up on it? Like, what went wrong? What are the scenarios that led us to this moment? This, to me, makes the show so much more interesting. Because not not only now is it like, okay, it's 200 years or 100 years before The Phantom Menace, focusing on a Sith, a female Sith character or a dark side character, but now we're going to be connecting into The Phantom Menace movie itself, which means that we're going to be governing the show around a lot of the main characters, perhaps even showing parts of Yoda or like moments of Yoda or something to do with Yoda, which I mean would be wild because he is around at this time. We actually use the term Renaissance or Age of Enlightenment. The Jedi uniforms are gold and white and it's almost like they would never get dirty. They would never be out and about. The idea is that they could have these types of uniforms because that's how little they're getting at the skirmishes. So this is like, this is like the golden age, as she says, of the Jedi where basically you leave your door unlocked anywhere and nothing goes wrong, nothing really happens in a sense. The Jedi aren't probably at this point overrun by politics and the Senate like they were becoming in The Phantom Menace and of course then in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith with the Clone Wars and becoming generals and all that stuff, which Anakin even thought was weird in the book Brotherhood. He's like, this is strange. I didn't really sign up for this. I signed up to be a Jedi, not a war general. So. The fact that this is taking place near The Phantom Menace and it's going to be tying into it, where her main question is how did things in The Phantom Menace get to be the way they were with all of the Sith, now these two Sith, Sidious and Maul, rising into power and kind of hiding in the shadows. So will we see, you know, Palpatine perhaps being born? Because at the time of The Phantom Menace, I think Palpatine is something like, he should be like 50 something in The Phantom Menace, and then like 60 or 70 in uh, Revenge of the Sith, I think. And Dooku's quite old too. So, you know, he could even be around the same time in this show that we see Palpatine, if we see Palpatine, probably not. Maybe we could see him at the very end of the show where like, freak, I don't know, man, Plagueis is around and we see him like meet a young Palpatine. I would lose my mind and then we get like a continuation of that that'd be insane so the fact that she's saying this and you know her very thoughts for the show are to connect it to the phantom menace i think the show is going to be probably a banger i'm very i'm more excited for the show now than i was before so anyways well let me know what you guys think what do you want to see in the show are you excited for it you're not excited for it what's something that you really don't want to see what's something that you're hoping to see from this show for me, I just explained them. So hope you enjoyed this little vid and my thoughts on it. Hope you enjoyed the news. I certainly did. I was very happy to read this. And I'll see you all in the next episode on Star Wars Theory. Until then, till the next one, remember, the Force will be with you.